Well, you know what? I should probably hit it to it. Oh, all right, yeah. I gotta get to bed early anyway. I'm doing a big uh, day hike with my buddies in Malibu tomorrow. Yeah. Hey, uh, thanks a lot. It was really, it was good hang. Yeah. Sweet, sweet hanging. Well, Mario's pistol. Nah, no, 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 take it easy, said it's like a... I'm okay. All right, adios, pistol. Take it easy, say slacker. <laughs> City slacker. City slacker. For what? For calling you city slacker. <laughs> For calling you city slacker. <laughs> For calling you city slacker. <laughs> For calling you city slacker. 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 I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you, man. I'm gonna get. You. I'm gonna come with something good. I'm gonna get it. All right. All right. Well. <laughs> I heard it. I'm sorry. What? I called you city slacker. That sucks. No, it was pretty close. That's, that's a lame nickname. That was good. Better than Jobin. <laughs> yeah, right. You got it, Jobin. You too, Jobus. Got it, Magooch. Gillis Gilman. They chicana. Later on, could you? So long, my ninja. I am going to be there for snow. I'm goldish. I'm gold in my ear. I'm Golden Richards. All right, Golden Richards. Same old shut different jar. Sounds like a planonis. I will hit you with the chips. I will catch you on the beans. I will be there or I will be not there. You got this one I lived in Tulum. Ooh, Tippecanoe yeah. and uh, Tyler too. Hey, you remember Marlena? Hey, Lenish. Hey, so you, you guys want to like maybe um, grab some grub maybe? Snake, some, snake up some beers? I'll snake a beer. I'll snake a brewskin. Cool. I'll snake a brewman. Nice. Yeah, I'll snake a cold cruiser. Nice. I'll snake one of those ice cold cruisers. I'd love to snake one of these cold -ish. What do you play? I play a little bit of everything, but if I had to narrow it down to one, I guess I'd say I'm an axe man. Uh, guitar. Play some guitar on the MTV. Axe man. Axe murderer. Slapping the bass, a big time. Oh, money penny, why don't you slap on the bass? True that, true that. Yeah, I've slapped some bass. I slapped a bass. I slapped a bass. Yeah, no, that's true, I slapped a boss. Leftover cuckoo roo. Yes, you know what the doctor says, that's a cuckoo don't. Awesome, later I'm on. Later on, Vetchin. Later on, my brethren. Later on, Vetch. What, what did I just say? Good morning, Davis Dunn Realty. How may I direct your call? Just a moment, please. Good morning, Leah. Hi. Hey. Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Uh-oh, there's my dog. Sign language, huh? A little bit. You're not learning that to talk to Lou Ferrigno, are you? Oh, no. Peter, I actually have several hearing impaired people in my family. So, oh, my deaf aunt's coming to town this weekend. I'm just trying to brush up on some phrases so we can communicate. Oh, Tevin, I'm sorry, I didn't. Oh, no, not at all. No, I didn't mean to be insensitive. Oh, no, Peter. What's, what does that mean? That means no hard feelings. It's kind of beautiful. What's that? It means that's water under the bridge. Cool. Cool. How are you? Cool. Sorry. How was your weekend? I sold your house. <laughs> I know that this is day. That's night. I say... Thanks. Thank you. Not like that. No, not like that. Further out. Cool, Leo. Cool. Okay, how about, uh... Peter, I gotta work. <laughs> Seriously, go sell some houses. No, right, man. All right, man. Coolness. Let's do it! To it! Jesus. 
A mark. B mark. L mark. <gasps> A B L. Day kinky makey. B camera B mark. B kinky in. Day two and we're already a well-oiled machine. A marker. Nice one. Oh gosh, look at this. It's like a like ba the battle B of the mark. slates. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But not really. Let's do this. <laughs> I needed to bring it down a notch. You look like you. <laughs> that was the chair. That was. Wait a minute, I just gotta. Oh, I just gotta. Oh, it's... wait a minute, I just gotta. All right, this is ridiculous. So I had lots of girlfriends, whatever. Big whoops. No, it's no big whoop. <laughs> big whoops. No, it's no big whoops. <laughs> Let me know when you're ready. My turn. Why the fuck would anyone get in a fight with Lufin for Whoa, whoa. Why would why? <laughs> Did you look under your plastron, dick wicker? Fuck you, Larry! <laughs> Did you look under your plastron bone smoker? Fuck you, Larry! <laughs> Doug? Peter? Hey, hey. Beatles or stones. On three. One. I'm not gonna read your lips at all. I'm gonna okay. look this way so I don't have to. Read, I don't read your lips. Ready? One, One two, two, three. three. Beatles. 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 Nice. Beatles. Mm. Oh my god. Chase it with the one. Chase it with the one. Swallow first. Oh. Then chase it. Ah! Oh, bring it. Ambrosia. If you're wondering if that was a hint for can I have some of the signature pot roast? Oh, you're getting some. It was a. It was a very deliberate hint. The conditions are so horrible. You the think, crab, the crabs are the size of this table. Those are the king crabs. They're huge. Oh my god. The cost I gotta get cable. One, it, it's worth it. How it's worth it for the deadliest worth? catch alone. Rotating stage. Was it the Sunday? Was funny. it the Some Days or Diamonds tour? Because I, I went. I want to say I went, yes. I was, I was seven years old. Me too. How do you remember the name of the tour? You remember Some Days or Diamonds? It's one of my favorite John Denver records. Oh my god. He plays 75 characters and you're seeing all of them, all of them, and it's totally different. He comes out and it's a curtain call at the end and you forget. <laughs> it's like, wait, I, wait, I've just seen I, 75 I've seen everything. No, I just saw Billy Crystal being. Everything. He's incredible. The guy's a genius. He's a totally underrated genius. Are you gonna genius. take me to the Yankee game, Pa? Look at our country. We, we crumple them up and we throw them out like like trash. They offer so much. It's such a shame. The way this country treats the ugly. Have you read The Shining? Don't say you've seen the movie The Shining. Don't say. Everybody says I say. Have you read The Shining? And everybody says, Yeah, I, 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 I saw, saw the, the movie. movie. Ah, no, totally different. Have you read it? No, I saw the movie. Fantastic. Incredible. Good. Really good. This is why I'm kicking you out. Oh, it opened up beautifully. Thank you. Come on. Good. I don't understand the stones. I know I'm in, I'm in the minority. So no, it's an aggressive thing. It's, it's, it's a testosterone People thing. People seem to really like the stones. There's something that's aggressive. They've got an aggressive vibe, you know? Or they're doing it to be provocative. Of course. Speaking of redheads, you know what? I always found really, really attractive. Yeah. Mary Lou Henner. Oh, my goodness. She's smoking hot. Have you seen the body? The body on Mary Lou Henner? I remember one time I was reading this magazine and she mm -hmm. was doing, there was like a lot of workout poses with Burt Reynolds. Yeah, yeah. Or Travolta. Is it a vintage magazine? No. What about you? Do you collect vintage? Uh... I, got, I got a couple of dozen lunch boxes. I oh. got some lunch boxes. Just, you know, the, the biggies. But there's a reason he's this famous, and it isn't a ha it doesn't have anything to do with his marketing. He is a visionary. You love Frank Gary. I love Frank Gary. You and I love Brad Frank Pitt. Gary. You and Brad Pitt and Frank Gary should build a, an aluminum foil circle oh. and float away. In, in my it. dreams. <laughs> uh, tomorrow night, Matsuhisa, 8 o'clock. I will see you there, sir. Awesome. It was one little kiss. I don't know why you're so upset. It's because I really liked him. He's terrific. <laughs> Waiting, haven't you? Haven't you, little man? Oh, shit. I told you. Um... I'm running late. Come but here. No, no, I'm fine. Come here. 
I'm okay. Just come check it out from the front. I don't come look. Come here. I can see. I want you to see it closer. I can see. <laughs> Ooh, it's like custom gay porn. <laughs> oh, finally! Should we go from, I'm gonna fuck a dude? <laughs> <laughs> My father's final words were, love her as I have loved, and there will be joy. I just get out of my chair, all right? This is not cool! But Bailey, what about that guy Tevin? What, that, sorry, that was like five octaves higher. I mean, for singles and doubles, you are the freaking Ichiro of realty. Ichiro? Yeah. He's the only Asian baseball player in the major leagues. What? You go into any Fuddruckers, any Olive Garden, any TGIFs, and you can piss on my face right now. Why? <laughs> Gary Coleman, <laughs> Jaleel White. <laughs> so ultimately, you're selling homes <laughs> to small black actors. <laughs> Carrot Top, Donald Sutherland. <laughs> Peter. Peter! Yes? What's going on over there? Oh, this is where I jerk off. Oh, I see. And the, uh, ribbies? <laughs> and the, um... <laughs> oh, I see. And the, uh... You can do it, man. I know. Right. I know I can't. I gotta, hey, I gotta do a day hike. It's so I one know. of those days. I know. I'm sorry. I know it's it's my, hot. It's my clothes in. So I've already assembled my plate, John nice. Hamburg. Yes. Harsh. <laughs> it's harsh. Harsh toke. What'd you say, John? What harsh toke. Harsh toke. <laughs> harsh toke. What the fuck? The fuck you does that mean? You just smoke pot to know what that means. Uh, no, that's a classic cut phrase. Okay. Harsh toke. Harsh fucking toke, dude. Sure thing, JH. You got it, JH. Give me a second, you garage. It's like so he just got a gay. <laughs> such an asshole. <laughs> Son of a bitch. I got the director making me laugh. He's not even in the fucking thing. Yeah, why don't you come in? We'll get a kill. Fuck you, Hamburg. Alrighty. Get out. I love you so much. I love you. I love you, John. You got it, JH. What was that? What's that all about? Is it to have my gut? You can admit it. Is that what it is? Yes, you tried it. <laughs> God, hold on. Barry hates when I'm in the house during his poker night. Would you give me a Get second, you out. fat douche? Get out hey, of the hey, fucking Zara house. Just got no, engaged. You, to who? To who are you joking? To Peter. You've met him like 20 times. I don't know Peter. You don't know Peter. I have no idea who that is. Okay, we've been on like 20 dates with him. You don't I've know. I've never him. met Peter. You are such an asshole. I don't want to talk to anybody. Can we get a drink? Half hour late and we still gotta wait. Really? You're yeah. playing the minute you walk in the door. Just shut up. I told you we were early. Would you shut up? It's supposed to be a... The minute we get in, you have to start bitching already. You told me it was a drop-by. You know this what? isn't a drop-by. This is by. not a drop-by. It's a damn engagement party. Belvedere it's... on the rocks, please. You're such an asshole. Could you just shut up and... And something with sour mix in it for her? I swear to God, it's not even your deal. It's my friend. Exactly. Oh, Why am I even here? It's not... This is horseshit. Hi! Hi. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 
Come on, come, come on. It's poker night. So? So just take her for a cup of coffee or I'm something. I'm taking her out for a cup of coffee? What do you, what do you, what do you take the boys to fucking Starbucks and play poker? Because it's poker night here. It's always poker night here. Yeah, it's always poker night here. Exactly. Do you hear yourself? It's I'm not putting her on the poker table while you're playing. What the fuck do you care? You think we can't hear you fucking blubbering and crying and shit and hugging and dying? Oh, shut up. It's, uh, it's my house, too. It's not fucking menstruation fucking conference, okay? Do you want my friends to leave or are you going to fucking be talking and talking and fucking oh, chirping like a bunch of cackling fucking, fucking whores? Yeah. I'm going to keep my friend here as long as I want to because she's my fucking friend and you, you, you want me to leave her? Not going to happen. Never going to leave her. I'll leave you before I leave her. You want me to leave? You want me to leave? Yeah, go fuck the pool boy. Oh, go fuck cougar. the pool boy? Why don't you get me a pool boy? I will. Hey, I have an idea. Let's settle this once and for all, all right? Beetle stones. Beetle stones. Okay, on the count of three. One, two, three. Shut, shut Beetle up. Fuck up. Sing tonight because this is the restaurant that Hop Peter. How did I call him Hop Sing? <laughs> That's where I learned it. And I imagine that that much love could be intimidating to try to to try uh, to try to wrap your mouth around. <laughs> yeah, this I've never seen JJ break like this. People make mistakes. Well, you don't take a dump in the powder room. You invited him? Yeah, but much bigger. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you invited him? Perfect. How much you bench? I don't know. How much you think? 500 pounds. I couldn't do that. I know. I feel like I'm in eight is enough. No, oh, you ever seen chocolate? What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> I hope you don't mind. You invited him? Please, God, I can't eat this fucking shrimp. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, shirt. All right. Watch your head, shirt. I'm just leaving. No, I mean, Rush is in the greatest band in history. I don't know the, who they are. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great spit take. <laughs> All right, this is ridiculous. So I had, so I had girlfriends. I mean, what's it? You're crying. <laughs> <laughs> you might need to cut. The name is James Bond. James Bond. I'll have a margarita.
with salt on the rim and a hint of poison. Wow, that's amazing. Well, hey there, Miss Money Pussy. Want to jump on my jet pack? Fly all the way to Monte Carlo. What are you going to do once you get to Monte Carlo? Put a bullet in your brain. <laughs> all right, enough of that. Let's just take the picture, all right? Arch an eyebrow for me. Other eyebrow? No, you just look confused. Arch your eyebrow up. No, not both, just one. I don't know how to... Oh. All right, maybe I was wrong. Let's see the, let's see the back. Mm, mm hmm You know what, I'm not sure I'm in love with the drape. What's wrong with the drape? Well, I, you know what, I don't think it flatters you, necessarily. Listen, I don't want to hurt your feelings, but it's not particularly flattering in an area where you, you want it to be flattering. How's my tush? That's the part I was talking about. Do me a favor, just keep, keep turning. Keep going until I say stop. What, you want me to just go around in circles? This helps me picture you in the best suit possible. Yeah, just keep going. How does that help you? I'm not sure that a, that a vent is right for you. Does the vent move, honey? Just, um... You don't like the split panel? Just put your hands up in the air. Lift your arms. Higher. Reach for the sky. Reach for the sky. All right, now, just jump. Hey, you know what? You're fucking around with me now. You know what? Fine. If you don't want my help, that's fine. Now, do you All want right, me to help or not? Yes. Do you want to look good at your wedding? Yes. I'm asking you a, qu a serious question. Do you I... want to look good at your wedding? Yeah, of course. Then jump. Like a man, Peter. Well... <sighs> jump like a man. I am. Good, now turn around and jump. And turn while jumping, if you can, please. <laughs> what are you, I don't know what this will do. I'm just fucking with you. Hey, do me a favor, just pick me out a goddamn fucking tuxedo, would you? Look, I was on my way when Zoe called. Invite or not, there was no way I was gonna miss your wedding. And I wanted to give you this. No, we didn't get him a gift. Yes, we did. What did we get? Just give him a check at the reception like a normal human being. It's, it's a registry. You go online. How much did you spend? Shut the fuck up. You shut the fuck up. It's a wedding. Guys. Oh, man. You don't have to do this. You know, I know you don't believe me, but I'm actually a pretty successful investor. So, look, the billboards were my wedding gift to you guys. Man, they worked. Yeah, I figured when I saw the Frigs that uh, it must have worked. It's great. Blue's the best. I can only imagine. I really regret uh, attacking him. He's massive. I put him in a sleeping hole. He's well cast as the Hulk. Sydney, I'm really sorry for all the stuff that I said. Kate, you called me on a lot of my issues. I appreciate it. And for the record, I saw Chocola. Just delightful. Chocola? What the fuck is that? I have no idea. It's a beautiful movie. Dude, we saw that, remember? It's a good Julie movie. Binoche was awesome. It's a good movie. It is, right? Yeah. I didn't expect to like it, but Johnny Depp is just so versatile and winning. He's the best. He's the best. From Jump Street to Fleet Street, the man is a revelation. Depp wins you over. I hated him in Don Juan DeMarco so much, I never gave him a second chance. But this time, he's Gilbert Great. He's funny. He's a funny guy. Johnny Depp's my top three. You don't think you're gonna like it, but then you do, because he's so good. You know what I like is that he's willing to discard conventional feelings about how to carry yourself as a movie star and live the way that he wants to. You really get the feeling he does what he wants to do. I wish I could make him into underpants. <laughs> it's amazing. He was in Platoon. Yeah, he has showed up. Check out Donnie Brasco. <laughs> Brasco, my God. I like Ed Wood, too. That guy can act. No, oh, you ever seen Chocolat? What the fuck are you talking about? The combination of the chocolate and his acting, it, it lulled me into acquiescence. So many times those romantic comedies with food don't work for me. Like Water for Chocolate. Ah, como agua para chocolate. I read it in the uh, original Spanish. <laughs> Big Night's good, too. That's another movie with food. Yeah. That's with Joe Montana? No, that's uh, Stanley Tucci. Oh, he's great. He's an actor's actor. Yeah, I think so, too. As is Tony Shalhoub. Yeah. Depp, man. Do you know he modeled uh, Jack Sparrow after Keith Richard? From, the ro from Rolling Stone? Rolling Stones. Same old Pete. Hollywood magic. I am John Hamburg, a writer, director, and a producer on I Love You Man. There was a script called Let's Make Friends that Larry Levin wrote, uh, and Donald DeLine, who is a fellow producer on the movie, was developing the script. Hey, Tony. Mark. 
Action! I Love You, Man, which used to be known as Let's Make Friends, is actually the first project I ever set up as a producer. So it's very near and dear to my heart. It wasn't until John came aboard that the idea that we initially loved was fully realized. And action. John was the perfect sensibility for the movie. <laughs> okay. okay. Let's, let's that was a lot of drool. <laughs> I had a version of the movie that I wanted to write, and uh, so we started working on it together, and I wrote a draft, and here we are. Ready here? Have you seen The Grotto? Paul Rudd plays a guy named Peter Clavin, who's a relatively successful L.A. real estate agent. Well, thank you for the great open house. My pleasure. All right. Peter Clavin's phraseology is a little behind the times. Take it easy, Magooch. Totes, Magoats. Later on the men, Jay. Later on, my machine. You don't meet many guys in their mid-30s that say, Take it easy, said it's like... It's just so dumb. That came out bad, too. I didn't, I'm so, I'm confused. I don't know what I'm saying. The character that I'm playing is a really nice guy. I've heard him described as soft. I made you guys some root beer flutes. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Peter, are those chocolate straws? Uh, yeah, pirouettes. Pepperidge Farm. And he's always been a girlfriend guy and focused on his relationship. And so he finds himself engaged on the first night of the movie to Rashida Jones's character, Zoe. Will you marry me? But within five minutes, she learns that he has no nobody to call other than his parents. Or wh what's his name? The one that you fence with? Gil? Gil. Gillian. Gil well, he's not really a call right away kind of friend. He's a great boyfriend and a great person, but he just kind of missed out on having a close group of guy friends. And he realizes how important it is for our relationship and for himself that he has to go on a quest to find a best friend. It's kind of frustrating. It throws his world a little upside down. So what do I do? I mean, how do you meet friends? It's such a weird concept. Well, I'll do some recon around the gym. But you gotta be aggressive about this, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you see a cool looking guy, strike up a conversation and ask him on a mandate. I go on a series of mandates. It's set up by his brother and his mother. And he goes on friendfinder.com. Oh, the picture's from a couple years back. <laughs> After a series of very unsuccessful mandates, he meets Sydney Fife, played by Jason Siegel, who is incredibly interesting. <laughs> This is Sydney. What's with that scarf? Is he an opera singer? <laughs> no, his mind is not for rent. When he got a government. Always hopeful yet discontent. He knows changes are permanent. Get together. Do, do, do. But changes. I don't shave for a mandate. That would be a strange thing to do. I'd feel weird about myself. I don't shave for a romantic date either. Because I don't like to look like I'm trying too hard. <laughs> Sydney Fife only likes to date recently divorced women who are older and aren't looking for anything except for uh, sport. <laughs> Ladies, he's a real thinker, this guy, and kind of a wild card and kind of a loose cannon. So it's been very fun for me to play because I haven't done anything like it. I've decided I'm doing it vaguely like Jean Valjean, and you're not going to be able to stop me. <laughs> it's terrifying as well because I I can't tell if I'm doing a good job. And John always gives like a slightly sarcastic answer when I ask, am I doing all right? He says, no. These, these guys are capturing you stealing that. Right, right. I'm just trying to put it in my pocket and that's it. <laughs> just for the record, I'm wearing a wig and I have a hernia, but I'm that kind of pro. And I have a movie in the theaters that just cleared a, hundred, a half a billion dollars. But I'm here number 10 on the call sheet because I'm a professional and because I love this film. You know, I, I committed to the film, and then of course Iron Man uh, came out and did, did quite well. And it was, uh, was kind of nice, I was talking to Robert Downey. You know, I, I committed to doing a, a supporting role in a small comedy, and he said it's the best thing you could possibly do. I told you we were early. Would you shut up? You're supposed to be a... The minute we get in, you have to start bitching already. You told me it was a drop-by. You know this what? isn't a drop-by. This is not a drop-by. John Favreau's playing my husband, or I should say I'm playing his wife, Mr. Iron Man himself. We're all very humbled and honored to have him be a part of this. I really don't want to be your friend or even talk to you. Cool. We can do something else. I'm going to go check on the table. Yep. Barry's a, you know, a, a supporting character. But also a bit of a foil to, uh, to Paul's character who is endeavoring to create friendship connections with other men. And one of the groups of people that he spends time with is myself and my group of friends. They do boat races where they're drinking steins of beer in a race and Paul drinks one. Puts it down and then throws up. And so we are testing the vomit now. Action. What we have is two pressure tanks, one with the vomit in it, the other one with air. 
So when we dump the air from one to the other, it projects it out. Three, two, one, go. I've never been vomited on with a high pressure air charged vomit projector. Our most valuable crew member, <laughs> our Fuki, stand in. In our society, this is our version of keeping us humble. It's just a bunch of soup to the face. Yeah. Okay, you want to hit him like in this. <laughs> I mean, that's okay. the biggest violation. For the visual effect, the best thing is if you could move into the puke, but once you're puking, don't yeah. move around. <laughs> that's <laughs> this is going to be the greatest vomit scene in the history of film. Let's boat race. We're going to keep it up. Ain't no luck in boat races. Go. One, go. two, three, go! Go, Barry, come on, man! I've not seen this yet, so I don't know what I'm in for. Party tomato. I trust John. I think it's going to be a really cool way to uh, button this little sequence of us playing poker and playing our drinking games. I think we got it. Look at it. <laughs> I doubt I'll be eating minestrone soup for a while. Andy Sandberg, who plays uh, Paul's younger brother, Robbie, he's a trainer at the gym, Equinox. I'm working out a lot. Yeah, what's your regimen? He's super gay, but in many ways, he's more straight than Brett's character. <laughs> Peter's kind of a tool, and Robbie's kind of awesome. There you go, brother. Dig deep, come on. Look at me, I'm pinkies, I'm barely helping you. He's all about aggressive strategy. Paul's younger brother, Robbie, sets him up on a couple of dates. I'll give you five free sessions if you take him out. This, mixed in with poker, hey, mixed Scotty. in with Mel Stein, mixed in with Doug. You know, just one after the other, it's just a disastrous series of events. By the time he meets Jason's character, you just want this guy to make a friend. Come here, bud. Oh, he won't let me do it. I was gonna put the boom mic in your face. Where, um... I'll put the boom mic in your face. <laughs> yeah, I bet you will. Paul's like the coolest guy ever. He's like my favorite person I've ever met. That's what I'm talking about! I'm a heterosexual man, yeah. through and through, but that guy is dreamy. Sounds to me like someone's developing a bit of a man crush. It's actually kind of adorable. Sometimes we're doing scenes together and I get lost in his green eyes. Peter's got a boyfriend, and I don't. Oh, God, why does everything have to be about you? Because I'm single. Are you cool with that? Am I cool with that? Of course I'll be your best man. That's an honor. It's... It started out, we were very professional about it, and then slowly it's degenerated over the past few hours. Jason's added a thin shade of creepiness. Bear hug style. I think I started by slowly going... Mm, mm, in his ear, just really lightly. And then it became an even weirder sound. <laughs> Uh, uh. <laughs> then I realized that we were pressed tightly enough that I could extend my stomach like this and it would push his stomach inward. So we've been doing that back and forth, almost like breathing together. It's got us very close. Oh, my heart is racing. Can you feel it? Uh huh. And they have been hugging a lot, even when they don't need to hug. It. Just to feel it. You Just to feel it. Today? And then. Paul Rudd, I noticed, was doing a weird strain with his body. And I finished and I said, what was that? And he says, I was trying to fart. <laughs> so that's where we've arrived now. <laughs> it's a very safe dynamic. I like it. Lou Frigno kicks ass. I've been working out with Lou Ferrigno. You know what you don't want? The sleeper hold from me. Yeah, I've been doing water aerobics. <laughs> He's going to get what he has coming to him. Give him a little single magic. <laughs> Peter, the horse got me to sleep roll. I don't think I can take him off. This is why I put Sydney, who played by Jason Seek, on the choke hole because he insulted me that I lowball his friend. This is a big, big client for me, both figuratively and physically. He's got to be like nine feet tall. Seriously, like his biceps are not as big as mine, but still pretty big. You know, Hulk's got me to sleep roll. Then easy, you know, easy, easy. Don't fight it. Honestly, I was in my office in New York uh, working on the script. Somehow, Lou Ferrigno popped into my brain. I wrote it, and Lou was excited about it. John Hamburg, the director, you know, he brought me in this film, and I couldn't be happier with a finer and a better director than he is, especially the way he knows comedy and playing the best out of me. You know, it's about real subject matter, but, but you want it to be light and fun and for them to play off each other, which they do really, really well. I read this in the script, and I thought, there's no way they'll actually shoot this. Background. And action. 
How do I get these ads just ripped? You just won't stop, huh? Sydney, stop it! I stop it! I would like to go over there. I have a good mind to go over there and give him a piece of my mind. <laughs> there are several things that bring the two of us together. Welcome to the Temple of Doom. The man cave is Sydney's garage, which he has converted into the ultimate men's leisure center. Planning? I used to uh, slap the bass in uh, high school um, jazz band. I bring Peter there, and for the first time in a long time, he kind of cuts loose as a dude. I call this movie a bromantic comedy. I didn't make that up just now. I didn't even make it up, but I call it that. They're like obsessed with singing and their bond is pretty strong. Are you all right? Rush, I love Rush. Dude, Rush is the greatest band of all time. Yeah, no, how about of all time? We both love Rush and play all in time. his man cave. <laughs> I know for a fact that John Hamburg, the director, was in a band called The Love Rhinos when he was in high school, and they did a lot of Rush covers. And so when he wrote this script, it, he wanted Rush to be the band that we were going to idolize. I was a fan of Rush as a kid, and still am, and so I knew they had a lot of songs that would be really fun to put into the movies. You know, and then it felt right for these two guys to bond over, and and suddenly we had the honor of getting to actually do a scene with them where they play limelight and we you know we geek out in the in the audience prepare to be rushified <laughs> sounds better on big speakers The Rush concert was really fun for many reasons, one of which was what we were actually shooting. I mean, it's, you know, dancing around, and I thought the dynamic of just really shutting out Rashida's character, you know, just bumping into her and being really excited about the music with Sydney was a great way to kind of show what was going on in our relationships at the time. She wants to be included as much as they want to include her. It's just not built for her. You know, it's really for, like, dudes. It's really for bromances. Apparently, Rush has said, that they see this a lot at the concerts, just like the bored girlfriend and like, the, you know, the guy and his best friend just basically humping each other. Jason and I have worked together a few times and, you know, we play off of each other better as a result. It's the best. There's nothing better than somebody that you can ping pong with comedically. We're gonna go be adequate. <laughs> so I've known Jason and Paul both for several years and, you know, I think that Jason and Paul are obsessed with each other. I love you, bro, Montana. I love you, Holmes. I love you, Broseph Gwibbles. I love you, Machacha. It's such a well-rounded cast that John Hamburg put together. It's like John just went out, threw this net out, and, and dragged in the funniest people in Hollywood. I'm trying to think of something intelligent to say. I'm loose now that I've had four martinis, but I was a little panicky earlier. Shakes. I don't, I, just, I don't care, like, be professional. At the beginning, you guys were chatting. Just... Jane's so great. Even when she was off camera, she was present, she was funny, she was in the moment. For a comedian, that's what I want to be. <laughs> JK is, like, the perfect person to work with. He's extremely talented. He is bright, he's funny, he's um, uh, extremely professional. I have thus far resisted to say, Jane, you ignorant slut but then I just didn't resist it then, did I? But I haven't said it to her, even though she is. He's everything that you want in an opposite. What an honor it is to be sitting here with Peter and Zoe's friends, family. You know, I was sitting around the dinner table uh, and I was taking in the people um, you know, who I was working with and I couldn't believe it. I felt humbled at best. Cheers. 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 We're actually doing a lot of, you know, goofing around like fifth graders really uh, sitting around, especially the eating scenes, blowing stuff out our noses because we keep making each other laugh, including the director. I just had to take a really gnarly shit. <laughs> As a director, it's always fun to act in somebody else's film because you get to watch their style and you always learn from working with a director. Just go back and forth. Without the doubt, leave it. I've learned a lot from John by the way he handles people. He's pretty upfront. He's not manipulative but he gets what he wants, he has a strong vision. It's really been wonderful. Save that incredible stuff for the take. And it totally does speak to John Hamburg's writing, if he can get this gallery of people. 
It's in the script. Oh, no, I think that's the one I added. Yeah, no, no you added it. it. He's a brilliant comedy writer, and what I think makes him a brilliant comedy writer and director, he comes very much from character. Paul, when you say you invited him, can you say, like, you as in, like, you're the one? It, it, it's, yeah, but much bigger. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> he really is right there with the characters. Action! He gets very close to the screen, and he's doing the facial expressions of what he kind of wants his actors to do. But there aren't too many writer-directors on his level. There are not a lot of people in the comedy world that can do both. <laughs> okay, cut. Okay, cut it! <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> The way I look at things is when you hear an idea that sparks something and you think, I relate to this, it's truthful, it's real, it's funny, and I haven't seen it before. The second I heard the idea for I Love You Man, I thought, this is a winner, gotta do it. I'd actually given up on meeting someone and, and you wandered into that open house, we hit it off and three quarters of the rush, songbook later, here we are. That's fun. Yeah, it's fun. I like that. <laughs> oh.